there's a story. You know, after the flood, after the deluge, all the gods could do was watch from orbit as the waters ravaged the planet. And then once they started to recede and the seedlings that were left of humanity began to emerge from the tunnels that they built and the cave systems that they built uh, that are riddled and all throughout the Egyptian and Turkish areas. There, I mean, like it, some of these tunnel systems go very, very far and they don't even tell you about it. They, they don't say a word to you whatsoever. But I mean, a lot of these places were used for refuge. It, <laughs> They're built like massive bunkers. Come on now. Like the Osirian. Come on. Really? Be real. Be realistic. As I continue on. Um, so, you know, after these people came out of these cave systems and tunnels, we, we had to help them. Especially Nam. She felt a dire need and obligation to help restore the seedlings of humanity, what we did destroy of man. <laughs> it's remarkable how Atlantis is in your face, but yet people still dispute the location. It's just a testament to how much power they have, or, or it's not a day at this point, not for me, because it's we're all one, we're all part of this, so uh, I can't say they any further. But huh, after the flood, Nan opted into getting old. She opted into aging. She aged, but did not. And then there came a day um, there came a day when she just got to the point where she um, she just grew too old. Her last words were for me to watch over y'all. Keep you safe. <sighs> Ooh. Well, that's a trip down memory lane. Hmm. But I digress. So after she had passed, I, I, Uchu was there. She was like a mother to him. She wasn't his official mother, but she was like a mother to him. Uchu was there. She, uh, he consoled me as best he could, but in the end, long story short, I gave him the authority and position of leader, and I just decided to wander, in which I wandered around, and I would come in contact with humans every now and again in my passing, and I would bestow a little bit of information, tidbit information everywhere I went, for the most part. Sometimes I just completely, it was just wandering, just wandering aimlessly. They would be curious. I was mostly taller than them, so of course they would come out to see it just, who is this walking around this, this tall entity? And uh, I would bestow them information. But then it got to a point where I was bored. I didn't want to go home. I just, I, I didn't want to live. The pain from Nanlil's death was so great on, on, uh, on Lil that he, off the coast of South America, on the western side, uh, there was an island, a couple of them, but it was an island chain. He, uh, 
they brought the island down on top of him. So, killing himself. Starting his whole reincarnation cycle. The whole process with Anlil started because of Nonlil's death. <gasps> oh, God. It feels so good to get that off my chest finally. Does that set me apart from anyone? No. This information, all of Although it's not common knowledge, it's easily accessible through the Akashic Records or Kundalini Energy, whatever you want to call it. Information is all around you, it's in the air you breathe. Stop letting them lie to you. They control you for how long? How long do you want to be controlled? Because I can assure you, with me being awake, that's not a good sign. It's not a good sign at all. So, now you know. Not the full truth. Not the whole truth. But just a, just a little speck. For my Rosicrucians, which color are you? Which spectrum do you stand on? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But now you know. Who are you? I'm not the only one. But with that information out there, and now common knowledge, do with it what you will. It makes no difference. Yeah, I'm not 